This is knowledge engineering with semantic web technologies. Lecture number four, OWL, Rules and Reasoning. In this part of the lecture, in this extra part of the lecture, we want to talk about OWL profiles. Okay, what are OWL profiles and why do we need them? So, first of all, reasoning with OWL, of course, is hard. What does it mean it is hard? Yeah, we know that using OWL full, which is OWL complete, including RDFS compatibility, is undecidable. What does that mean? Simply that some algorithms, like for example the checking of inconsistencies and stuff like that, are not decidable anymore if we are using RDF semantics and RDFS compatibility together with the complete OWL uh, set of syntax. So what can we do? We know already if we simply say no to RDFS compatibility and simply constrain everything to OWLDL, which is the description logic, which is based on the description logic SROIC, D. And if we apply some structural restrictions on regularity and simplicity, we already had this in the course, then this type of description logic still is decidable. But nevertheless, it's still hard because some of the decision procedures really take a lot of time. So for example here, this is n to x time. This means this is non-deterministic double exponential time for the completion of some algorithms. And this is really some time. So to be really of practical use, one tries to find subsets of this language, which are on the one hand sufficient expressive and on the other hand much faster. So, what can we do? The idea is we want to identify uh, maximal OWL sublanguages or fragments for which reasoning is much easier. So, which means they are decidable, not in exponential time, but even in polynomial time. And polynomial time, yeah, this is yeah, sometimes quite fast. So, this is like the traditional non-optimized sorting algorithm, for example, runs in quadratic time. So, this is polynomial time. So, to achieve this, we have to get rid of some stuff of the OWL language, of which part especially. So, we have to look which part of OWL is responsible for this super polynomial runtime. And it's the part that is responsible for the so-called non-determinism. For example, if you remember the Tableau algorithm that we had to solve satisfiability problems for description logics, when we were looking at specific connectors, like for example at a disjunction, we had to split and we had to create two new branches in our algorithm and we had to continue each one because for each branch we had to show that there, for example, is an inconsistency. So usually what you do is you continue with one branch, then you have to go back, which is the backtracking, and then you have to continue in the other branch. And this, of course, in the end is non-determinism because you guess which one to follow first. And therefore, of course, this takes a lot of time. So for example, when you have a disjunction or what is logically equivalent, a negation plus conjunction in your logic, then this is a possible reason for non-determinism which might cause super polynomial runtime. And this is the same, for example, for maximum number restrictions. What does that mean? So, for example, if you say, yeah, let's take something which is at most three. So you have to find three instances, and then for all of the rest, you have to check whether you don't find another one to check the satisfiability of exactly this expression. So therefore, you also have to check everything. So therefore, this has super polynomial runtime. And it's the same for a few other examples. For example, if you have a combination of existential and universal quantification within one single superclass, or if you have non-unary enumerated classes. So you can think about why in these cases um, there is also super polynomial runtime. But what we have to do is these things, especially all together of them, they are not allowed in these so-called OWL profiles, which should achieve polynomial runtime and then should be much faster. Okay, so 
Please keep in mind, there are of course many other features which may also cause non-determinism. So these are not the only ones, so I have to remind you about that. Okay, let's have a look at a few of these OWL profiles. So there are three specific profiles. It's OWL2EL, OWL2RL and OWL2QL. And we start here with OWL2EL. The name comes because this type of OWL is based on the description logic EL++. So what is the description logic EL++? So you see here it contains a conjunction, but it does not contain a disjunction. It contains an existential restriction with, again, restriction to a glass, and it, it contains the, the top and the bottom concept. Then allowed are also nominals, restricted property ranges, the self-restriction, the general property inclusion, which usually is in the R box, and transitivity as well as reflexivity. On the other hand, certain concepts are not allowed, like for example the universal quantification, disjunction, complement, number restrictions, disjoint and inverted properties. So this is a special kind of description logic which is used for legacy reasons because there are lots of knowledge bases which are exactly based on that kind of description logic. The nice thing about that is um, it has polynomial complexity for all these standard entailment algorithms like for example for decidability or for testing the class membership. And it's simple to implement and yeah, it supports some important existing ontologies like for example here the SNOMED CT ontology which is a very large biomedical ontology and which is based on that kind of description logic and therefore of course it's also nice to have this description logic as an OWL dialect. Okay, but I know from this kind of description, you can't really imagine how this logic, how this OWL language really works, so I have a few examples for here. So what I can express in OWL2EL is for example this one. So one who has sorrows always also has liquor. You can say this with OWL-EL. Or one who is married and who is a Catholic priest does not exist. So these two classes, definitely married and Catholic priest, they are of course disjoint. What else can I say? So I could say a German usually knows an individual which is called Merkel. You see here, Merkel is an individual, but it's in these curly braces, which then in the end defines a class which has exactly one member. So this is a nominal. Another example, somebody who lives in Europe is a European. That's quite easy. Another thing, yeah, of course, our box are allowed. So somebody who has parents, who has parents, has grandparents. So these are examples for OWL 2 EL. And another one, a CEO is somebody who is supervised by himself. Let's take a look at another of these dialects or profiles, OWL QL. QIL stands for query language, and this, of course, has um, some, some relation to relational databases here. So um, the interesting thing here is if you are using QL, you can apply this on problems or on legacy data which come from relational databases. And this kind of OWL profile is based on a description logic which is called DL Lite. Let's have a look at DL Lite. So here in DL Lite, you see that for superclasses or for subclasses, which means left or right, from the subsumption operator, there are different constructors allowed. For example, for the superclasses, you have here allowed um, the conjunction identifier, the negation, then existential quantification. And for the subclasses, you have the existential quantification here. Then allowed are so-called inverse properties and simple property hierarchies, so not the complex property hierarchies. And the A box is defined like in Schroeck. You see here is a lo lo long list of not allowed subjects like, for example, universal quantification, enumerated classes, disjunction, the self-restriction, functional and inverse functional properties, number restrictions, transitivity, and so on and so on. So many things are not allowed. But the reason for this is you are now somehow compatible to relational databases and runtime for many things is sub polynomial, even subpolynomial, so it's pretty fast. So for example, instance retrieval here is possible in uh, log space, which is really, really fast. 
and there are fast implementations available and it's scalable. So if you are dealing with huge databases, then this is the OWL dialect of choice. Let's have a look at a few examples. So for example, one who is married is lucky and has no sorrows. This is possible in OWL2QL. Or a doctor is somebody who treats patients. Two examples, pretty easy, and you see it's sufficient expressive. So you can define lots of interesting classes and relations with this kind of dialect. The last one that I want to show you is OWL-RL. And here the letter R stands for rule. So this is based on a horn rule fragment of OWL2. And of course, this especially is to make the connection to legacy applications which are based on rules, like for example with prolog systems. What you do here is you interpret usually subclass axioms like rules. So certain restrictions, of course, have, has to be made for superclasses and subclasses. For example, for the superclasses, we have here the conjunction, which is allowed. We also have the existential quantification. It's a special kind of existential quantification and also a special kind of universal quantification, as well as number restrictions are allowed here. And for the subclasses, we have even conjunction and disjunction and two variants of the existential quantification. Then you have the bottom uh, operator and everything else which is not mentioned here usually is not allowed. The nice thing of this dialect again is it has polynomial runtime complexity, it has a simple implementation and it's related to rule language so it's for legacy applications and the connection to prolog systems for example. Let's have a look at a few examples in OWL2RL. So here you see first the OWL2RL expression and then you see how this is expressed as a horn rule. For example, we have here the parent of a parent of is a grandparent, which means X is parent of Y and Y is parent of Z, then X is a grandparent, which is of course a horn rule. What do we have here? An orphan is somebody who, who, whose parents are dead. So if X is an orphan and X has parent Y, then Y must be dead. Or monogamous is somebody whose married uh, partner is alive, but he only has one of them. So if you try to express this as a rule, you have uh, X is monogamous and X is married with Y and Y is alive. And then you say X is also married to Z and Z is also alive, then it must hold that Y is equal to Z. So this is a number restriction, especially here, only with the number one. And then of course you also have here um, the combination or hierarchy of properties. You can say, for example, that child of connected with child of is uh, of course grandchild of and um, you say X is the child of Y and Y is the child of Z, then X is the grandchild of Z. So these are examples for our two RL. Okay, yeah, so why do we really need so many OWL fragments? Yeah, simply to enable a connection to legacy applications and to foster, of course, therefore, the application of this kind of description logic, of this kind of semantic web technology. You have to keep in mind that although all of these simple fragments are somehow polynomially uh, con concerning the computation time, if you combine two of them or three of them, then again, the combination of them is not any longer lightweight. So you see here then always the time needed to compute then satisfiability or, or the other basic algorithms becomes exponential. So it's even exponential time hard. And if you would restrict to fewer profiles, then of course we would give, give up some, some possibly useful feature combinations. So the rationale here is we say the profiles are maximal, well-behaved, well, not really quite well-behaved, OWL2 fragments, so some of them you will see that there are some critical um, uh, connectors in there, but um, they always select some suitable feature sets that might be appropriate for especially your application. So what you do usually is you think of your application, what you want to achieve, 
How expressive should your language be? And if possible, you, you, you restrict yourself to one of these OWL fragments simply because then computation becomes much faster and much more efficient than in the case if you select OWL DL as a complete language. Okay, so, so far with the OWL profiles, in the next part of the lecture we will talk about the semantic web rule language.